you. Thank you, uh, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Leticia. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Marana. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, such a great pleasure to be here with you today. So, so Leticia, I, I would like to start with a riddle, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, <laughs> ju just to get us going. So um, please write in the chat uh, what you think is the answer to this riddle. Are you ready? One, two, three. What is it that will never wear out? You can give them away and still have them. Each time you give them away, they will get better. And if you don't give them away, they're of no use. What is it? Write it, type it in the chat. Kevin, if you want to join in, uh, let us know what you think that is before Letizia tries to guess. <laughs> no, I want to do that, but we will leave uh, our participants to guess. And we already have some uh, very interesting answers. We have stories, knowledge, love, <laughs> some other ideas. <sighs> Stories. Stories. <laughs> Maybe it was too obvious. <laughs> Blessings. I love That's that. That's lovely, Asha. Lovely. Blessings and, and, and love. Nice as well. Well. <laughs> so, yes, the answer is right under your tongue, isn't it? I also love love and knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, Thank you for, very uh, much. <laughs> Thank you for, for taking part in, in this. And yes, the answer is Letizia. It's under your tongue. And of course, it's stories. <laughs> That's what we are going to talk about today with you. Yes. And so ju just to get us started, um, this is what we're going to touch on. Of course, it's a very short um, time slot. So we. we, we We'll try to fit in as much as we can. Um, traditional and digital storytelling. Um, both Letizia and I work on mainly um, in Italy. Letizia has now been, has just arrived back from the US. <laughs> so she's been a busy, busy body. Um, but we mainly operate in Italy. And those of you who are from Italy were, were, will know that I'm... I'm more of a traditional storyteller and Letizia is the innovator and brings the technology um, to, to this area. And, um, and so Letizia will be talking to you more about the power of digital storytelling and, um, and how these two branches um, meet and develop transferable skills in the classroom. We'll be looking at some best practices and some examples as well. And fingers crossed, there'll be time for questions. So before we get started, Letizia, would you like um, to give us uh, a definition of what we mean by digital storytelling? Of course. Uh, thank you very much, Manuela. So uh, the definition that I'm going to refer to is from the Digital Storytelling Association um, that says that digital storytelling is the modern expression of the ancient art of storytelling. Throughout history, storytelling has been used to share knowledge, wisdom and values. Stories have taken many different forms. Stories have been adapted to each successive medium that has emerged from the circle of the campfire to the silver screen and now the computer screen. So I like this definition very much because it gives us the idea of how um, uh, storytelling uh, starting from um, uh, our natural need, um, so the ancestral need of our um, babies uh, to um, listen to their mom's storytelling. Um, and then uh, following uh, all the evolution uh, in the different media and of course technologies so from the campfire uh, to the silver screen means that down to the computer screen um, we um, uh, we just um, um, we, we can uh, use the potential the natural potential of storytelling um, to adapt it and to uh, enhance it thank you to the um, uh, digital I mean um, web tools and 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 apps and repository to the the, the computer screen in general 
so we can go uh, on. Thank you, um, Manu. So the um, uh, multimodal text is, um, of course, um, the key word because in the digital storytelling, we um, somehow want to um, imitate a human communication, which is multimodal. We often use, of course, voice, but at the same time, facial expressions. Um, so we we uh, want to, uh, of course, gestures, and um, uh, so our communication is naturally uh, multimodal because um, it uses different codes, different um, uh, um, ways uh, of, of communication. And um, uh, in written content and format and image and sound are the other important component of uh, digital storytelling. So altogether, there's um, a mixture of, of elements. Yes, uh, yes, next. Thank you, Manu. So um, in, a, in a digital storytelling, we um, uh, want to tell a meaningful story, a meaningful text. Uh, of course, um, we start from the author's perspective and insights. So that this is the intention, what the, author's, the author wants to convey and to show um, the audience, to tell the audience. Um, then, of course, the threading, the, the data and events uh, that will be um, the, the main component of the story, and they will add value, and of course, they will be um, um, added in, in a certain sequence. And um, uh, there will be a mixture of different engagement strategies, because we want the audience to recognize some patterns, some situations, to identify themselves with specific characters, and to touch their emotions, their, um, uh, of course, uh, their feelings to involve them um, because this is the main aim and that we can do that using of course soundtrack light color uh, and um, so this mixture of multimodal elements um, so uh, actually what is a digital storytelling is is a story is a story that we want to tell we want to uh, reach uh, the audience uh, and we watch we want to touch their emotions and feelings using different media that could be simply a text but uh, so simply um, a powerpoint simply um, a very um, i mean simple um, technique digital technique but then we want to use uh, to to add visuals music video voice um, so that could be could start from a very simple digital solution to a um, very techy advanced solution but I mean no matter what but it's just um, uh, the um, the idea that through um, digital we want to tell we want to share a story with with the audience and um, um, the uh, storytelling format makes the case of course um, we want to, to make it uh, convincing we just um, want to um, to tell our own story, our own vision of the world, and convince, somehow, touch, somehow involve uh, the, the, the listener, the audience in general. Uh, so why digital storytelling in English language teaching? What is the power of digital storytelling? Um, first of all, it enhances lessons. Uh, of course, we we can have our students engaged in using technologies and at the same time develop their higher order thinking skills. And of course, we um, recall here um, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, actually uh, all thinking skills, so lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills are at stake because um, they need to, uh, to think, they need to activate their critical um, um, thinking skills, their creativity. And it appears to different diverse learning styles um, because um, every student will be able to uh, to use different uh, techniques and to to choose their the, the um, uh, favorite um, uh, channel, the favorite code, favorite, uh, and so uh, meeting their learning styles. Um, then we can of course assign research to require point of view. So it's also um, a way to to have them get out of their comfort zone of their single in the, uh, story. Let's say. To to embrace uh, also um, the um, uh, another point of view. At the same time, um, we can have them practice communication skills, um, uh, oral, but also oracy, because um, uh, in in some cases, for example, they they will be able to uh, record their own voice and um, so insert the voiceover, or they will be able to um, explain and present their their story to an audience. 
Um, of course, writing skills as well. So um, using uh, subtitles and um, uh, putting so the uh, voiceover, but at the same time also writing, um, uh, I mean, text, so um, subtitles. Uh, and then, of course, I get students to develop a meaningful voice when they, um, uh, they, they have to record their own voices at the same time they practice a pronunciation. Uh, and now with the um, artificial intelligence, we also have a lot of tools, a lot of um, uh, ways to, uh, to use artificial intelligence to reproduce uh, the voice and so from uh, text uh, to speech. Um, and of course, um, everything is technology skills, te technological digital literacy, digital um, uh, information literacy and um, uh, so it's a uh, part of um, the 20th century skills. Okay, so storytelling also develops children's understanding of short stories when we talk about children, but of course uh, it, it applies to uh, in, in a lifelong perspective, their language skills, critical thinking skills, and creativity. So uh, it's, it's clear how digital storytelling can really be an added value in our um, uh, ELT classes. It can really make the difference. It can really um, help um, uh, just um, um, our students be really engaged and um, somehow push uh, towards their um, willingness to communicate, which we know is so difficult to um, create and to foster uh, in our classes, especially in, um, uh, considering in Italy, when um, we, we can have, of course, um, an Italian um, uh, teacher uh, of English, uh, and the situation we all know is a sort of fake, because um, uh, it's just uh, the class that we, where we need to, to find the right trigger for our students to communicate and to use the language for authentic tasks. And this may be a really good example. So seven pillars, seven pillars of a digital storytelling. A point of view, a dramatic question, which is the starting point that where, where the story starts, the emotional content we want to convey to touch um, uh, the, the, the audience um, feelings and emotions, economy, economy of um, elements of um, um, digital, um, it, according um, of course on what we need, what we have, the pacing of the story and the rhythm um, just um, a Putting everything um, in uh, you know in uh, in line and um, tuning up with the um, uh, voice, soundtrack, music, image, uh, and uh, which is um, not so easy. Uh, and the gift of of your voice, especially with the, the voiceover and an accompanying soundtrack, when we want to make it even more dramatic, starting from the dramatic question and more involving. Um, there are different types of digital storytelling. Yeah, there are some examples that could be uh, personal narratives when there's a character um, telling his own story, uh, on then memorial stories, stories about events or places in our lives, stories about what we do, uh, love stories that we, <laughs> that we all like, of course. Uh, another uh, category can be um, examination of historical themes and event. And here, for example, mm -hmm. when we talk about a historical theme or event, uh, require students to research a topic. Um, we can also um, have um, a lot of uh, input for CLIL, for example, because uh, if we want them to work, for example, on history, on, on history, on historical topic in uh, in English, uh, of course, that that's CLIL. Uh, stories that inform or instruct, and um, uh, in this case, we have curriculum content which delivers information, motivation, and inspiration, or testimonial or documentary. And uh, um, uh, yeah, once again, here yeah, can be um, um, uh, th th there can be a lot of input for for clear uh, for geography, for example, if you, we want them to create a short documentary on some places or um, the places maybe that that they visited uh, or um, uh, just um, a geographical, you know. Um, uh, um, documentary. So uh, as we can see, um, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, suggestions for ELT and CLIL in, uh, in digital storytelling. Okay. Over to you, uh, Manu. So how is it um, different from um, traditional uh, storytelling in your opinion? Well, uh before I answer that question, uh, uh, and maybe we can share ideas together, um, I, I'd really like to start uh, with um, with a very old uh, story. In fact, um, th this this story comes um, from way way back, and 
as we know, storytelling is the oldest form of, of education. So I'm going to pronounce these words and I invite you uh, from home to repeat them with me. And then I'll tell you where they're from. After God had created heaven, heaven created earth. Earth created rivers, rivers created ditches. Ditches created mud, mud created the worm. And the, this poem goes on, the story. And if you are hearing, you've just heard, or, or you've just pronounced the beginning of a 4,000 year old story. How powerful is that? Um, and as, as we enter the realm of storytelling, um, we can stop just for a moment to consider the antiquity of this tradition. Um, and now we are going to take our place in a chain of tellers and see how technology can make this even more powerful. So as, as Lucizia asked me, okay, yeah, what, what are the difference? Let's look at traditional, traditional storytelling. So it comes from the oral, tradi oral tradition and storytelling involves the spoken word. It's passed down through generations orally. Examples of this could be folk tales, myths and legends. Um, bedtime stories like Letitia, Letitia mentioned, stories told by grandparents or community elders. Imagination and interaction, listeners actively engage their imaginations, picturing the story in their minds. Um, oops, I'm having their cult cultural significance. Stories are full of uh, of culture, they talk about our stories, our ancestors. Um, and so they reflect cultural values, customs and, and historical events. And the last point is limited reach though. Um, yes, because uh, oral storytelling is, is, a, is about um, the audience is typically uh, limited to those present during a storytelling session or, uh, for example, at a, at a gathering or a, at, a, at a festival. But now let's look at digital storytelling. And maybe you might want to add some of the um, some things you've already mentioned, Lutitsa, like multimedia elements, global accessibility interactivity and flexible formats. Um, what, I, what I can say about the multimedia elements is that, like you showed us earlier, Letitia, there are various media forms like audio, video and images to create a rich, immersive experience at times. Um, digital stories can be accessed globally through the internet, reaching a vast, diverse audience, which is quite a, a big difference um, com compared um, to traditional storytelling. Interactivity and participation. Um, often digital storytelling allows for audience interaction. Uh, I, I, I just went to a talk earlier on where they were using apps where the audience could actually interact with a with a storyteller um, um, likes shares even comments yeah in the in the mo most basic forms um, and I'm sure there's more more to this but flex I think the flexible formats uh, in terms of length and structure uh, and delivery methods um, for example short form, uh, stories on social media platforms. These are all categories that are not mutually exclusive and there can be overlap between traditional and digital story methods. Um, for instance, a traditional folk tale can be adapted into a digital format with multimedia elements, making, making it accessible to a broader audience. So ultimately, uh, both traditional and digital storytelling have their unique strengths, I, I, I believe, and they coexist in today's diverse storytelling landscape. That's my opinion. What, what about you, Letizia? 
Of course, of course. That, that's what we generally want to do with, um, uh, with, with technology is we don't want to substitute, let's say, pen and paper or traditional uh, way of, of teaching and learning. We just want to integrate it to, uh, to make an added value. Uh, and, but of course, everything is, is, on, is in our hands. So we are the teachers, the educators. We know the right way to use them. We know the right con context, the right target. And uh, so why not? Why not using uh, traditional storytelling nowadays as well? Uh, and, and at the same time, when possible and when relevant, uh, the digital one. So I think, yeah, I, I agree with you, of course. And I wonder what you think uh, from home. Uh, so do do comment in the chat and for, for, for us and later we'll pick up on your comments. Um, so let's move on to, let's see how powerful digital storytelling um, can be. And as, as Letizia said earlier, digital story refers to the practice of using digital tools and technologies to share and create narratives and combines um, elements uh, of images, video and sound. Th this, this approach has gained significant attention in education due to its potential to enhance student engagement and promote deep learning. The, um, there's a piece of research conducted by the University of Houston and other institutions, which and, and the study demonstrates the positive impact of digital uh, storytelling um, on student learning outcomes. Um, and the study mentioned, in, um, and maybe I'll put the link there of the study uh, in the chat, um, mentions, suggests that students who engage in creating a digital story exhibit higher levels of critical thinking. And, and you mentioned that, Letizia, creativity and collaboration compared to those who do not. So let's, let's delve in to some key benefits of digital storytelling in education. Um, so I think these uh, may, may, may be obvious, but engagement and motivation using the media that they are used to. Very often we, we, we refer to our students, our children uh, or teenagers as um, digital natives, but very often they use digital to play, to play games, or they have some apps on their phone, but they actually uh, need to be trained on how to use the apps to create something in, in an educational setting. So, um, and, and digital storytelling provides that dynamic and interactive um, platform for students to, to express their ideas and creativity. Um, critical thinking was mentioned earlier and communication. When students create digital stories, they need to think critically about the content, the structure and, the, and how the narrative has an impact. So they have to analyze the information um, um, and make decisions about what to include or exclude um, and construct their storyline. Digital literacy and technical skills, uh, I think uh, we needless to say, in an increasingly digital world, proficiency in technical skills is essential. And, and it's not just about using apps on a phone. Um, so, you know, video editing, graphic design, audio recording, these are all skills, employability skills that they're going to uh, use also later in life. And personal expression and reflection through digital storytelling, students can express their thoughts, their emotions and perspectives in a creative and personal way using the media they like, using the media that they enjoy. I don't know if you've ever uh, tried, but as soon as you switch on the interactive whiteboard, their, their attention <laughs> is glued to the to the whiteboard. So uh, and and preparing our students for the digital age, uh, for what awaits them, whether in an academia um, pathway or uh, in the world of work. This is um, th these are all skills that are being developed through digital storytelling while using the language as well. Um, 
So to me, it seems a, a great superpower. <laughs> and, um, and here are some examples from the classroom. Uh, so now I'm going to stop sharing uh, and we can share. And I think that the first example is um, maybe Letitia, you want to introduce your the group of stu students or the student that worked on Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, um, uh, an example of digital storytelling that um, I, I mean, my, my students at university um, uh, worked on, um, starting from uh, the idea of um, appreciate uh, the, the plot uh, of, um, of a novel like Frankenstein and trying to um, so, um, of course, read, understand it, and so talk about it, but at the same time, elaborate and, uh, um, let's say, reinvent. That was the idea. So, um, the ETVT um, within this online task that they were assigned uh, was to select some, um, uh, some, some parts uh, of the story, some, some chapters and um, some, some uh, um, uh, images also from um, uh, some, some uh, um, movies that have been um, produced about that or um, different images that it could, um, um, uh, of course, uh, find in the internet and um, uh, collect, collect them, make them, uh, of course, add um, voice, add um, uh, sort of voiceover and uh, subtitles and text and whatever they, they wanted to do to, to, to add in this sort of uh, um, um, magic uh, mixture of uh, multimodal uh, input. And um, uh, this is the result. This is one of the on, on my students' results. It's alive! It's called transcranial stimulation and it's the latest practice in sports medicine. Allo Neuroscience creates brain stimulation technology to optimize body, mind and overall health and well-being. They test the effects of electrostimulation on the sports performance of high-level athletes during strength and explosiveness training. Everything thanks to a pair of headphones, the Allo Sport. Everything can be controlled by an app on your smartphone, and according to data collected on elite athletes, these special headphones have allowed to improve the explosive strength of jumpers by 13% and the fluidity of movement by 11% in just four weeks. So well, maybe we can stop. So this is this was the um, uh, this is a student's voice as you 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 can hear in the voiceover. And uh, just um, to add that the the task uh, as a part of the task was not only to um, uh, read the the novel and uh, understand it and get the idea that the gist, but also try to um, make it. Um, I mean, uh, the message uh, to to see the, the the actual message that is still valid nowadays. So the links with um, uh, with present day issues and so how. Uh, that in general can can also be uh, can can always be uh, actual can always be um, relevant to our lives to our daily um, uh, issues and problems and so that was the connection that the student made. And I, I, what I liked about um, Frankenstein is that uh, the student is using voice text, uh, he, uh, so he's, he's had to uh, reduce the text to, to captions and there's music. So there's a lot of elements of multimedia uh, modal elements in there um, that demonstrates his competence in the digital. Um, 
Were there any specific apps that the students used, Letizia, for, for creating this? Uh, they they were they were left free to to choose their own. In this case, I think it was Movie Maker that uh, I mean from the um, which is the, the easiest from from Windows, but it's the same uh, in in Mac. But um, there are also well, what I what I do is I, I suggest some, normally some some examples of tools, but because there are so many. But then um, uh, they 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 are free to to decide. They're free to use their own. And, and How old were your students, Letizia? Well, these students are uh, university students, so uh, from uh, 20 uh, up, and some of them are also um, working working students, and uh, so also even older. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for that, Letizia. So now we're going to the other end of the spectrum, um, and I'm going to share with you uh, uh, digital storytelling that was um, created um, by a group of students in, 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 in Palestine. And the teacher who shared uh, and has allowed me to share this work with, with, with you all today is, a, is um, Luzan Mata. She's a teacher in Palestine. Uh, teaching in Palestine can be quite challenging. And, and children live under tough circumstances, which makes teach, the teaching process hard, harder. Um, and the classes are very crowded. Um, and as a teacher of English language in a primary school, Luzan um, wanted to bring something that would engage her pupils and that wasn't just about grammar and vocabulary. So this was, um, they went to al Qatan Library um, to read international stories, and they started to, to discuss these stories and created their own, their own story with a, with a new slant, a new, a new uh, shape. Um, they took photos, so they used camera, um, um, they retold the story, they created the story and retold it. And then they decided on the characters and the setting of the story, took the photos, and then um, they actually um, moved the characters themselves and uh, collected these. Uh, each scene needed 24 photos per second. So the, this was um, a bit more complex, if you like. And then finally, the students recorded their voices to connect it with the movie. And, um, and the movie was made with an app called Stop Motion. So now I'm going to share it um, so that you can um, see the outcome of this beautiful project done um, in Palestine. Uh, Manuela, we can't see the video. <clears throat> you might need to reshare it. Why are you here? I'm a fish can. You're you were sharing your file, your your files folder. Don't be afraid. There we go. Come with me. Perfect. This is the shark. You dragged me. Mom, Dad, help me, help me, please. The fish escaped and went back to the sea. She went to her lovely family. Mom, Dad, my lovely family, I love you too much. I love the sea. I will never go to live anywhere without you. There we go. Um, so that was from um, Beach Elementary School in Gaza, and um, and how they created their their own their own story uh, and put it together with um, the, this 
animate animation stop app. <laughs> so these are just a few examples, and um, there are other examples, but I think we have to move on. The um, sometimes, um, for example, you can simply record your own uh, PowerPoint or use. Um, you use Zoom like we are using now to record a story. So like Letizia said, there is no, um, no rules, whatever. Uh, I think in this case, the teacher wanted uh, to develop some digital literacies with the students as well. Uh, and, and they were using the language to, um, to retell the story. Um, so now I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint. So these were just two examples from, from the classroom, but I'm sure um, you also have many others. And yes, developing um, employability skills, uh, as we've seen, um, digital storytelling provides uh, us and our students with an opportunity to, to enhance a range of these skills. Let, let, let's look at them. These are the ones I came up with, and maybe there are the, there are more uh, that you might want um, to add. And please do in 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 the chat uh, do do add. So mm, critical thinking, like uh, we've mentioned already, it gets students to think critically throughout the process uh, to analyze the information, uh, the credibility, the relevance and uh, whether they're a primary school or a university, like we've seen. It requires collaboration, uh, teamwork, uh, a very important skill uh, today, um, where students can collaborate, communicate, and share responsibilities. Um, they must negotiate ideas, brainstorm, um, a key skill in any job today. We are made up of teams, aren't we? Uh, and projects, and there's always a team behind a project. Uh, creativity and innovation, mm, as we've seen both in Frankenstein and in, in the, the, the Crazy Fish, digital storytelling encourages them to think creatively and find innovative ways to present their information and engage with their audience. Research and information literacy, uh, I think, Lutisa, you mentioned that earlier, that students um, need to conduct research. They need to gather reliable information, analyze the data in some cases, uh, and learn to navigate through various sources, evaluate the, the credibility of the information as well. And uh, the key, for me, very important communication and presentation skills um, they learn how to present information or a story in a clear, concise and engaging manner, which, which is um, a, a very important employability or transferable skill, 21st century skills, soft skills, whatever you want to call them. And the last two, I think, go together, adaptability and tech, uh, technological competence, um, exposing our students to various digital tools and software and technologies uh, as they learn to adapt to new to new technologies and nav navigate on different platforms. Um, and this is crucial in a rapidly changing digital landscape. Uh, so by engaging uh, your students in digital storytelling, we're offering them the opportunity to develop uh, and showcase these skills, these employability skills in a fun and engaging way. So let, let's move on to some best practices. <laughs> As we've seen, um, to create an effective digital story, um, you need the multimedia elements, a narrative structure, an interactive element, uh, visual design and audience consideration. Um, 
which also link up to, to if you like, with some changes, but you, the narrative structure, the interactive element is always very present also in traditional storytelling. Um, so, yeah, talking of apps, uh, which app very often, oh, but which apps are they using? So I'll leave this uh, for <laughs> Letizia to, to comment this slide. Um, yeah. But here at this link, this is there are 132 different tools, but help us navigate in this ocean of tools, Letizia. Yeah, I don't know what it's just, um, of course, we are not going to, to read all of them, and but, but you find, of course, this link. Uh, just to tell you that there are so many, um, so many apps, so many possibilities, and it could be also, um, you know, um, a, a, an example of task itself to uh, navigate among all this um, <clears throat> wonderful world. Uh, of apps and and have them uh, choose the the the, the, um, the one they prefer and um, uh, but I would like to um, move with the next slide just um, share with you uh, an example of um, uh, um, a tool uh, using uh, artificial intelligence and there's um, the, the buzzword of the of the time the um, uh, chat GPT and so on and this. Uh, um, uh, this uh, tool, which is called Tom, and I, I really encourage you to have a look at it, is, is wonderful because um, it's a combination uh, between um, Canva, if you're familiar with Canva, so um, a sort of uh, um, um, interactive um, uh, tool for slides, but at the same time with the gener generative tool, as in ChatGPT for AI. And so um, uh, we can ask uh, the, the, the artificial intelligence, uh, we can prompt, of course, as we do with Jack GPT and and ask what we want to um uh, what one we want the story to be about so that here is just an example i just asked them um, please um tell me a story about a girl and um, that's what came up came out and um and so the the we can have this suggestion of course that we can adjust it we can uh, change it and um we can change uh, images but that's what uh, automatically the intelligence artificial intelligence will, will do for us uh, and there could be also fun a lot of fun for the students to, uh, you know, prompt the artificial intelligence and so have um, uh, automatic digital storytelling, we can say uh, intelligent digital storytelling, whatever, that could be maybe a new research <laughs> area yes. to, uh, to work on. To explore, to explore. Yeah, yeah. just maybe we can put, uh, yeah, yeah, put, put the link, I put the link in there. Thank you so much. Just, I think we've been been running out of time. Uh, yes. we, can, we can conclude with the um, the two um, uh, the two um, references. Uh, maybe Manuela, if you don't mind, the latest the last two slides. There are two publications, yeah. that, two articles that I published. One is on um, uh, uh, is 2016 on um, uh, the journal which is called Fictions, uh, and it's um, digital storytelling for. Clear uh, with Daniela Cucurullo. We we wrote an article on uh, the um, uh, power of uh, the potential of digital storytelling for for Clear. And in the in this case, we also um, refer to Techno Clear, which is our um, first love. With Daniela, we've been uh, moderating this MOOC for different editions. And um, so there's um, there are examples of uh, digital storytelling um, created by participants of our MOOC. And here you can see Voki as an example of tool uh, creating avatar. So an avatar telling uh, a story. Story. And the other publication is um, uh, very recent. It's just um, um, uh, is, is a book um, by Ruth Led, um, uh, Research on Integrated Language and Context in Diverse Contexts. And I had the privilege to write a, a chapter in uh, in this book, um, uh, telling uh, about um, uh, a pilot uh, project by um, a primary school teacher, Angela Banzarella, that I would like to thank. Uh, and um, uh, the, the, the topic is digital storytelling for clearly in a primary school. So uh, how um, digital storytelling can be effective also for varying at children, primary school children. Here you see the, uh, we don't have time to go into the, um, these comments, these are uh, two comments from two children, two, two pupils uh, um, in, involved in, in this pilot project. And um, uh, you can you can have an idea of uh, their enthusiasm, how happy they were to work with even, I mean, um, very uh, easy um, uh, web tools that uh, the teacher had presented them and uh, encouraged them to use, but um, the results were really um, uh, engaging and very rewarding so uh and and that, that, that's yes uh, leave to you for yeah. the final presentation Mama. and they they will have uh, the slides so you will be able um 
to to look at the to look at the slides and get the links in the yeah uh, to the publications. Um, and yes, we we think that um, this quote sums it all up. <laughs> um, digital storytelling fits so well in today's students is um, the skills, the tools, and the practices that resonate with contemporary learners. Um, we're sorry that we have uh, no time for questions, but um, Kevin, you you might want to. We can take uh, the, there are our emails, so if you yeah. want to um, post them there, uh, we'll be happy to answer them.